What is going on guys? Week number one for the Big 12 Team Builder is finally here. We're getting ready to get it going. We got Ardmore Thunderwolves taking on interstate rival Oklahoma State. We're going to dive right into it. Cade Wilson here on an eight yard rush. I will let you guys know as a disclaimer, the stats will be at the very end of this game because it just glitched out on us yet again. Yeah, we always seem to have some glitches in the early parts of the season. It's probably our disc. We don't really know why it happens. But it does, and so we're just going to make yeah. the best of it. But Ardmore Thunderwolves, you guys are getting a first look at these guys. So Cade Wilson is a kind of a balanced quarterback. He can sling it, just like you guys can see here, to Kevin Tratnik. Good player, good receiver. Mercutio Hardaway is the B receiver. He's their best, probably their best receiver. And then D.D. Foreman would be the second best receiver on the outside. So you guys will see a lot of them. Ardmore defense is very solid as well, but Justice Hill going to pick up a lot of yards there. Mason Rudolph, pretty, I mean, look at this play. Goodness gracious, he still gets rid of the throw, but McCullough and number 26 there could not pick it off. Yeah, uh, Mason Rudolph. He's got a pretty good arm. You guys know Mason Rudolph. He can do a lot of everything. So a very good quarterback all around. So the Thunderwolves are going to have their hands full trying to stop him for four quarters, I think. Yeah, I mean, pro quarterback in the making. Obviously, this is 2017. Yes. Oh, what do we got here? D.D. Foreman. Foreman. Huge, huge play. Cade Wilson took a shot on this play, but like right here, he had him beat. Right, that's right. So a good call there. Look at this. Diving oh, oh. attempt. Yikes. Didn't happen. But Wimberly on the read option is going to pound it in for the Ardmore touchdown. They're going to take the lead here, guys, 10-3. to three. There are some field goals that I'm trying to cut out of our gameplay just because, you know, field goal's a field goal. Nothing too exciting there. All right, so Rudolph going down, finds James Washington. Nice Huge catch. catch. Nice catch, too. Second and three, and McKinley going to track Mason Rudolph down. Going to stuff him, and then look at this, false start on Oklahoma State. It's going to push him back five yards. going to be third and eight, and a sack on Mason Rudolph. They're going to have to settle for, yet again, another field goal. All right, so 10-6. to six. Not quite the high-scoring oh. affair, but here goes Wimberly. Nice run. Second and 11 right here, and Cade Wilson finds Krupski. All right, Krupski. I like this guy. He can he can do oh, everything at tight oh, end. It's pretty good. Oh, what a throw. Oh, my goodness. To Akeem Jenkins. Nice, nice toss right there. And triple coverage, too. Nice way to get open for Jenkins. But look at this throw yet again. Cade Wilson just finding the open man right here to Kevin Tratnik. All right. And at the end of, near the end of the half. So that was a very clutch throw by Cade Wilson. Nice little play action pass there, but right in the back of the end zone. That's an unbelievable throw. Third and inches, but look at this. Two men take Justice Hill instead of Mason Rudolph, and he's going to run for a big gain here. And look at Sanchez. He gets pushed. And his momentum takes him the other way, and Hill just runs right by him for the score. All right, so now we still got some time here right before the half. Bombing it. Deep bomb to Touch Kevin track. Tratnik. He's on fire right now. I, the guy's catching everything. Second and nine here, Wilson scanning the field, and again in triple coverage, and Akeem Jenkins with the huge catch for the score, 24 to 13, headed into the half. Right, so Jenkins comes up huge there, and you can't see the score there because uh, the infographics weren't coming up, it's but we know out. what the score is, 24 it's, 13. It's all glitched out, what can you do? Good stop there by Guerrero. Going to force a punt, and now DeQuandre Shook finally gets in. I want to see him. Where's he been? <laughs> He's been sitting around a little bit, just on the sidelines doing his thing. Here's a play here to Jake Wood, trying to get him involved in this offense, and he's just not going to be able to get into the end zone here. You, you said it was Jake Wood's time right here. Let's see what he can do. And then he's going to get stopped on third and goal here we're gonna go back to him for fourth and goal and he just can't get in yet again so a stop there on the one yard line mason rudolph ends up getting them back up the field around the 20 yard line that and that huge pass yeah that was a total bomb oh, and oh, sanchez should have made the pick that's Not a, good that's a game changer right there because rudolph and oklahoma state coming back 24 20. Yeah, they get the touchdown to the tight end Bassett. And now Wilson has the football trying to 
Yikes. increase that lead, and he gets lucky. So Yes, he does. 24 to 20 now in Oklahoma State back here with the football. It's starting to get a little dire here because the score is going to put them up three. And look at this to McCleskey. He stays in bounds for the score, but did he? Did he Ooh. is the question. Yeah. Officials will challenge the play. He did and a little they, thing with his leg here. He goes, whoop. whoop he did the stanky leg. <laughs> They're going to actually call this a no score. Good stop by Ardmore there on first and goal. Second and goal now. And again, two guys are taking the running back. And Rudolph Where walks right Where is the in. discipline, coach? I don't I don't know. It's first It's first week of the season. That's, that's my excuse. Okay. So Wilson's got to go down the field here and get some late heroics. Right. going on. See Wimberly getting the football here. There's Shook. Shook is shaking and baking for 10 yards right there. Nice job. It's going to be, that's going to set up first and goal. So now it's going to be third and goal now after two incomplete passes. Big, big down right here. 41 seconds left. And Didi Foreman is going to come through. Shakes his man. Gets open for the score. That was pretty easy money right there. I think you read that the entire way. He got the man coverage. He's beat right off the snap just about for an easy touchdown and you ground the clock down a little bit running the football to, down the red zone there so exactly but it's not over yet guys as the deflection and this game is going to go to Ardmore great job on defense to hold that dynamic offense to just 27 points yeah you'll take it because Oklahoma State is pretty freaking good and I think this is a very big win for Ardmore to get kind of on everybody's radar and as you see here we have the stats for you that you weren't able to see I see 474 total offense Cade Wilson money 24 for 33 368 72 percent no turnovers exactly no fumbles no picks great game had about 100 rushing yards for Wimberly out touch shook 20 to 2 that was surprising. yeah we got to get him more involved for sure and only three grabs for Hardaway that was disappointing We'll get him going. Yeah, we talked him up a little bit. But, I mean, Foreman and Tratnik, really stellar debuts here this season. So we are going to go to game number two. We have the subscriber favorite, their team, the ACU Spartans. They're hosting Notre Dame, a team that most people hate, and for very good reason. Well, yeah, I mean, it's Notre Dame. There's too many to list. They're the Golden Domers. I mean, yeah. Yeah, so the Spartans now, big big statement opportunity here, national television, get a big win. They don't, they're taking on all comers so that they don't, they don't care who the opponent is. You know, they just want that W. That's how they think about even the Big 12 teams. You know, they don't yep. really care. They're just in it. And look at here, we're going to open up with Sergio Armanderas with a huge sack. The scoreboard disappeared right after kickoffs. And that'll be back very shortly, so stay tuned. More glitchiness. Week one glitchiness. <laughs> Third and 11 now. And nice stop. Nice stop for ACU's defense. Yeah, and Wimbush, pretty solid quarterback. Here we have Corey DeLoach, who yeah. is coaching his first game. He's looking on very intently. Jay Sims, the offensive coordinator. Yep, shout out. And here's Robert Bishop. First time we've seen him. He's just throwing darts all over the field. Finds Joe Johnson Jr. And he is going deep here right down the sidelines. Almost, Almost. going to get picked off, but 5 of 7 for 41 yards at this point. Field goal by Charlie Taff is good. Let me know if I said that last name right. I think it's Taff, but... All right, 3-3, three three, Wimbush drops back, and oh. he gets a face full of Matthew oh. Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Oh my goodness. Guys, look at this. Just manhandled the center and then just took out his aggression on Winbush. Unbelievable. Matthew Kennedy, guys, right there. He's the next JJ Watt, I think. Second and, and 15 here. And who we got? Armanda Armandaras again. Yep. Another tackle there made by the defensive tackle. He's really getting involved here. Look at this. Extra effort. He's got enough strength. He was, uh, he was like suspended in air and still was able to bring that guy down. Yep, look at this nice little footwork there by Kyle Mitchell. He had a big game. Yes, very big game. Second Here we got 
Kerp with the catch. So everybody's getting a piece of the pie here. First and 10 now, Robert Bishop dropping back. He's gonna find, that's Amari Manuel right there. How tall is he again? Uh, he's, he's like tall. six seven. He's, he's got he's Manuel big. here again, but forward progress apparently is gonna get him into the end yeah, zone here. You don't often see people end up at the five yard line and have it get called a touchdown, but <laughs> he got that's in. what we have here. So I like his number, number nine. It's a good number. Now, Wimbush is knocked out on this drive. The backup quarterback comes in, and that's Ian Book. That is Armand Hammer on the stop. And they force field goal attempt here at fourth and inches. Will he make the kick? It's a chip shot, so he should make it. But wow. we got to show these a little bit, right, guys? you got to show them just a little bit. We know that field goals are not suspenseful, but sometimes if they miss, that's a good thing. You never know. It's a uh, fairly low-scoring game in the early going. Oh, Bishop. Uh, Bishop, no. <laughs> a pick six is going to end up making it 13-10 to 10 here. Early part of the second quarter. Ah, And they've given up the lead to the Irish on an errant throw by Bishop. And, I mean, it's just not a throw that he needs to make. His total forced throw there. Definitely not open, but he's going to have a chance to respond here. you got five minutes in the second. Still throwing these uh, dimes here. 15 yards for Kyle Mitchell. That's five receptions thus far. All right, here we go. Big time field goal. It's a 50-plus. Taff nails it. It's going to be 13 to 13. And you see they're doubling up Notre Dame in the total yards department, so they are totally in control of this game. There's Equinemius St. Brown. And a completion downfield here, and a fumble. Who caused that fumble? Cedric Granger. Yeah, look at him, look at him. He's he's spying it, he's ranging it, and then boom. You can always lumber. You can always tell at a distance by the sleeves. So Corey Deloach likes it. Deloach and Granger doing their <laughs> doing a good job so far. All, all these subs are doing their job right now, even though it's 13-13. Look at that clock management. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> First and ten now. And here we go, here we go. Big run. Oh, shake him off, baby. Let's go. Go down that sideline. Nice. Nice job by Noah Jones with a 29-yard reception there. And you see the eight catches, so he's getting a lot of dump-off passes. Not really uh, much of a running oh, game to speak Oh, what a of. throw. Is that Mitchell? That's Mitchell it's again. Kyle Mitchell downfield, 39 yards. And ACU is rolling here. Bishop going Bishop. to the corner. Look at that. Look at that toss. Out of bounds. Oh, they called it out of bounds. Yes. Wow. Or was it? Okay, what so we, we do got? have a challenge. This is good. We do have a challenge. This is Joe Johnson. Down the sidelines. Did he get the feet in? Uh, yeah. I think he got he, like three. That's an NFL caliber catch right there. He got two feet in. Nice. Great throw by Bishop. Even better catch. Yeah, I mean that that's that's a catch by like you said, but that's an NFL rules catch. Terrible call by the referees. So we did ask Corey Deloach, the head coach, some halftime questions here. He did say that Bishop has a short memory. He does a great job of forgetting the mistakes and moving on to the next play. He knew the situation and didn't need need it all back in one throw, put together a nice drive and got into a situation where good things can happen and he stepped up and he made the play. Yeah, which is exactly what happened. Just you know, if you're gonna, you're if you're gonna ask the head coach those kinds of questions, you know, don't don't be like the uh, the usual halftime reporter. Like, what do you need to do in the second half? Uh, we need to score more points than the other team. <laughs> That's how we win games, boys. Correct. And Bishop takes that in himself. So big time. Can't really call it a response drive, but it's kind of a step on your face kind of drive yeah here. it's not a put away score by any means but it is a hey we're here we're ready to roll rock and roll 10 All receptions right. now okay so this is crazy this is a part of this air raid type of offense that you guys decided to choose for acu 51 attempts for bishop 10 receptions yeah. for and there's to crispy to crispy gets a catch so nice he's job. getting involved in oh, a look floater. At, look at that. Look at that. Is that manual? Yes. 41 yards looks easy. I'm surprised he didn't manual. carry that into the end zone, but 
He's a big boy. Yes, he is. He's almost like a Calvin Johnson, should I dare Ooh. to say that? Maybe Randy Moss a little bit. He's got that he's not as like wide, but he's got some length to him, you know. Noah Jones with the kind of well, it's a it's an option. It's an option play. No read option, just an option toss. Yeah, so we finally had a running play that we could show, and look at this punt. That's Carson Klett. Yeah. The punter. He's he got hyped up a lot. Yeah. Gets it inside the 20-yard <laughs> line. He's Australian, correct? Yes. Okay. I got a lot of narratives we got to juggle in our heads. I know this is so. this is difficult. A little a little bit difficult for us in the first run here <laughs> for ACU. But look at this third and five, and look at this big play. But look at Wyrick Dicer gonna catch him. That was Granger. Caught yeah, yeah. Dicer behind him, but yeah, Granger, he got beat by Equinemius St. Brown. Granger, he uh. He makes some really good plays, and then there's times where he makes some screw-up plays. Well, why about that? He just yeah. tried to just establish himself back in there <laughs> by giving the quarterback a shoulder to the to the sternum. He was giving he him the business. Down. Yep, and we got a run here. That's uh, Josh. See, see that, though? There's number four, Granger. Should have probably taken out his legs at least, tied him up, but... Couldn't nail him. So, Ooh. but look at that! Look at that! There's Granger again. So he comes in and makes that play. So he's all over the field. So I guess there's just a lot of opportunity for him to screw up, and there's a lot of opportunity for him to come to play. Make a big play. Make he'll a big he'll be a great one. He'll be a great one. Don't yeah. Worry. So ACU takes care of business, yet, guys. I mean, it was pretty much wrapped up a little while ago, but we wanted to show you guys some scores. Look at the yards total to the rest of the team for Bishop. Yeah, Bishop was in total control here. I think the NFL scouts were happy with that debut. Uh, yeah. There's a lot to like. This is, I mean, this is scary. This team is a juggernaut. They're going to be very hard to bring down. Well, after we're watching some of that Ardmore gameplay, I'm thinking like, okay, so here's ACU. I don't know if I got a shot there with Ardmore. <laughs> I, yeah, Holy I, I don't, crap. I don't know. So Let's, here we go to Little Rock. They're going to host Tennessee. Big game. What, how do you think they're going to fare here? Uh, they you should, know Little, Little Rock. Well, they should do pretty well. I mean, Carter Ash, he's got the senior leadership. The calling card is the defense, and we got a playmaker here in Etwan Billings. He looks like he was in. Look at that Ooh. toe tap right there. He looks like he was in, like he got the toe in, but they're going to say he was out. And then you got Marquez Maven Jr., uh, but he's going to get stuffed here. But he's a, he's a good running back. You can get going a little bit. You guys saw that play right there. Just no blocking for him, so that's kind of that's kind of harsh on him. Tight end is Huff. He makes a, he makes big plays for them. This is another game where our stats got blanked out. That's all right. We'll make do. Yeah, we'll have the box score at the end there. There was McFadden on that catch. Here's Billings again. Short in the end zone, however. First down. We'll take it. First and goal. And now here's Ash, the senior leading quarterback, and nice catch by Billings. But there's another example of the stupidity of the physics engine in this game. It is what it is. You can't be perfect. He was diving for the football in the end zone, then all of a sudden he just got teleported back to upright. Right. Now here's Dormady taking over the reins at quarterback for Tennessee. Not a lot to like from Tennessee last year in real life. Who knows, maybe the simulation will go different. Maybe Butch Jones will save his job. You never know. I like the Volunteers. They're like the Michigan of the SEC. Yeah, I can get behind that. <laughs> First and ten, here's Dormady, and a nice catch there to their tight end. I think that's Wolf. Makes the catch. Here's Dormady on the option. He's just going to get in. But, yeah, I mean, okay, so Tennessee's on the board. Tie ball game here. They just responded to a Little Rock touchdown. Now Ashy's going to throw. That's brutal. Yeah. There's no reason to make that kind of throw, Ashy. Throw the ball away. But they're not going to get the ball back after a defensive stop here. Here's Ashy. Ah, interception down the sideline. Only the lineman, oh. to, <laughs> the lineman cannot make the tackle. And it's going to be a pick six. We see this happen so much, so many times. Well, some of our guys, our quarterbacks, just the CPU quarterback thing just can't figure it out. Yeah, and for the CPU versus CPU games, we, you know, the interceptions were a little bit lower. 
so they're not throwing like five picks a game. Here's another one. There's one. You can't make that throw. I mean, this is we kind of highlighted this at the beginning of the season that Carter Ashey's going to probably have some problems, or actually the Battle Hawks are going to have some problems here at quarterback, and we can see the head coach, Buddy Monroe, is not pleased with his How senior quarterback. How I mean, could you be? This is the number 24 team in the country, and you're you're hosting them at home. I mean, right. This is where you need to step up as a program, but. Not when you're giving up touchdowns like that to Jawan Jennings, and now it's 21-7 Tennessee, and they've got all the momentum right now. We're going to have to see what Little Rock, oh my goodness. And he's going to do it again. He's going to do it again, and a tackle cannot be made. Mabin has to make the tackle in the end zone. Shaq Wiggins is in for another pick six for I have, Tennessee. I have no idea why you would make that throw. It's behind the line of scrimmage to a covered wide receiver on a screen and the DB's just breaking on the ball. But he's gonna go he's gonna send them back out there. Gutsy call. I mean that's even your quarterback. This is three interceptions now. Yeah, and you know, scores twenty eight to seven and the offense is responsible for fourteen of Tennessee's points. So the defense is not playing that horribly as you see him stop me there. We'll see if they can get a comeback going. Here's Maven Jr. a nice blocking up front, shoves a guy off of him. Maybe that's the spark that they needed to head in here. Well, to finish this quarter, to get into the half. Ashy here on first and 10. He's got all day to make a throw. He finds the open man there. Nice catch, nice run after the catch. Pick ups, picks that up, that first down. First and 10 now, and a little lobber, and another interception. His fourth of the game. He under threw it into double coverage. Like you said, four picks, and it's only the first half. You gotta, you gotta get them out of there. And look at this huge throw by Dormandy. Yeah. Ouch. It's thirty-five to seven with a minute fifty, and the, look at the Battle Hawks fans compared to the Tennessee fans. That tells you the story, right there. I mean, perfect spiral here. That was a dart. Goodness gracious, Tennessee's fired up on the sideline, and I mean that body language says it all. But what does that end zone say? Battle on. Battle on. You have to push through. You have to battle on. Ashy's still in the game, guys. Mid part of the third quarter here, and look at nobody was giving him high fives. It's like, hey, 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 give me a high five. Anybody? Scoreboard. And here is Tennessee. They go back into that end zone. There's now six minutes left. We got a fourth and one situation here for Little Rock. Let's see if they can do anything with it. Maven's going to yeah. get to the goal line. So they do pick up that first down at big time. So maybe they'll maybe they'll score. Maybe they'll score. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll come into this the, into the week number two with a 21 point. Uh, yeah, they need, they need something for the spirits right now. Just a little bit. I mean, good. Yeah, I guess. Huff gets the touchdown here. I mean, 45-21. <laughs> yeah, but look, now you got Tennessee going back. Going back down the field. Just can't stop them. Can't stop them. 52 to 21 they lost by 31 points um, maybe yeah. maybe 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 fourth and goal here and just short just short of the end zone but guys so, this game is over yeah that's quite the anticlimactic finish for our week one debut I really thought Little Rock had a decent chance in this game they're rated a little bit lower than Tennessee but you're still thinking like they should belong in this kind of game and they just got their doors blown off. I know it. I mean, that, and that's the thing. They have such an electric atmosphere at Riverbank Stadium that, you know, I mean, the, the slogans battle on. I mean, you're you're all in for Little Rock if you're a fan there, if you're a student there. I mean, everybody's really gung-ho about that football program. And, and then to come out there like that. Well, I want to say you might be tempted to be like, y'all, where's the fight, you know, but... I think most of that deficit was on the shoulders of yes of Ashy. So yep. maybe if he just cleans up his game, I think that's a you know it's a totally different ball game. So going forward, play a little bit better, Carter, Ashy. Yeah, or else someone by the name of Rhett Bollinger is going to be coming in. Very possible. So, so that, that's a wrap for week one. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. Part one.
yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Leave a like if you did. And we will go into Saturday. Looking forward to the Denver Tech Rush taking on Wisconsin at Wisconsin. And then we've got Midland State at LSU. And then don't the forget Prairie Dogs. Yep. Who are they playing? Western Michigan. Yes. At Waldo Stadium. War- row the boat. In Kazoo. <laughs> it's going to be a tough game for you, I think. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm still trying to get a feel for kind of where we're at. We're, like I said, we're playing a team that's coming off a Cotton Bowl appearance. They're not your typical MAC team, so this is not going to be a cakewalk by any stretch of the imagination. Well, Rooney and Willis will have to play well, and Frankie Pritchett as well at running back. Definitely. So, guys, we'll see you on Saturday. Hope you enjoyed this video. Happy Friday. We'll see you then. As always, peace.